All right, so let's see. You find out what you like. You start doing it more. Then you kind of join up with clubs and groups about it. Something about going to college related to that. And then getting a career and having more fun hobbies and really living out your purpose. Something. Oh, wait, are we recording? Oh, oh well, hi. Welcome. I was just talking about you. Uh, to myself, I, I'm i alone. I don't feel bad about it. This is College Success Coaching, and I'm Eric Al. Let's get started. All right, my friends, welcome all, welcome all. Let us start this with a little Thanksgiving that we made it through the turk apocalypse, and I am giving thanks that all of these turkeys died so that we could all eat them. I do have to say, I was a little harsh last week on one of my videos, you could say, about how I was a Scrooge of Thanksgiving, and uh, I just want to make sure this is on. <laughs> that would be awkward. <clears throat> I want to make sure that I let everybody know, too, that I did enjoy the turkey that I ate, so... It didn't go to waste, and it was actually very delicious, and it was from a farm locally, and it was just really cool. It was really good, and um, yeah, so you can send your hate mail about the fact that I ate a bird uh, to eric at collegesuccesscoaching.com, and uh, by the way, before we go over whatever else we're going to be doing, I do want to stop and uh, compose myself as we look at the mug of the week. It is... A composition book and it's really cool like one of these marvel notebook things this was like so neat to, that i had to get it it was just so cool there's another one coming up for next week it's going to be from the same company but it is equally awesome and reminds me of my childhood when these notebooks were quite sought after this was like a big deal when you had one of those you were cool uh cooler i mean i guess like academic stuff wasn't super cool but it was cooler than having just like the paper that you got from school the paper that we got from school was like literally brown it was not white it was it looked like shredded and recycled uh paper towels because our paper towels were also brown and looked like they were shaved and recycled uh wood shavings from a tree so your paper towels were wood chips and your paper was paper chips paper towel chips Anyway, they looked awful, and when they got wet, they were so they smelled bad. It was really weird. So we thought maybe it was toilet paper that was recycled. But anyway, you got those for free, but you got these. You had to pay. You had to pay dearly. It was like something like seventy-five cents for one of these suckers. So you were cool. And then if you had a ballpoint pen, man, you were just living the dream. Anyway, we'll talk about that actually another time. I do want to discuss paper medium and how that's going to help you to be a better student than your friends who are using just their computer and their phone. That should seem obvious, but it's not, so I'm going to go through it. But not today. Today, we are going to go through something different. Today, we're going to talk about the article of the week. This week's article which is, I, I guess, not a super fun one, but it is a really important one because I, I want to address several things that are problematic here and how systemically higher education is changing, making it more difficult for colleges, but also making it more difficult for you. So you can check out the description in the, uh, in the, the questions and answer for all my subscribers. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'm sorry that you're not here on the live stream and you're watching this days later when we could have been talking to you and you could have been asking your own questions about this, disagreeing with me, agreeing with me, telling me sweet nothings. I don't know, whatever it is that you weird people like to type to me during the time that we're doing the live stream. I, I, it's funny, I do like to laugh at this. So why aren't you subscribed? You can just go down into the link below and you can click on that. It'll have you have the ability to get started. You can pick whichever one you are, middle school, high school, or college. And look out soon, I will be doing a postgraduate group that will be my 21 to 30 year old group. And I'm looking forward to having you guys all out there and talking about what do you do after you graduate? So we talk about everything that's going on in the season, in the month, in this part of the year. We talk about the evergreen topics, the things like staying safe, staying healthy and, and getting more out of your education. I, yeah, I give skills, I give tools. I tend to be an, you know, what they call an expert in this field, which what is this field? This is getting into a great school that meets your needs, getting the most out of your life while you're getting into school, getting the most out of high school, middle school, college, and after 
all around while just not settling for good or great. If that sounds interesting to you, jump on in. It's two weeks for free, and then it's only $50 a week after that. It's less than two Uber rides on a weekend in New York. Oh, man, Ubers are expensive. Anyway, uh, we're not, and it really does make a lot of sense. We're a great community, and we can't wait to have you join it. So uh, hope to see you next week. Anyway, let's get going on this article. It's Tidewater Community College's enrollment is falling and changes are coming. So right here, we already have what this is going to be about. This is going to be about the college, and it kind of doesn't matter what the college is called, okay? It just I just picked one from the Virginian pilot, but it's a story that is repeated through community colleges throughout the country. But essentially, what it's about is that a college is falling in its enrollment and changes are coming to address the needs that are changing in the college. But what we're really going to be talking about is not that. We're going to be talking about what this means and what's the landscape for higher education. All right, so let's jump in. Preliminary registration data for the upcoming spring semester at Tidewater Community College shows a familiar trend, declining enrollment. According to in-house enrollment figures reported this week, the college has 816 fewer students registered for the upcoming semester than during the same period last year, about an 11.4% difference. If you're watching this and you're in the administration, have them start talking to me, okay? Like, we'll get these people registered for classes because it really, college is the best vehicle for long-term success in a commercial uh, and a non-industrial first world country. So if you're watching this from England, if you're watching this from Portugal, if you're watching this from Greece or anywhere else, if you are in a post-industrial or computer age commercial country, it, college still is your best ticket to gain financial success and eventually, hopefully, financial freedom. And we'll talk about that more later in the year. You don't get to hear about that yet. So anyway, the college has suffered from declining enrollment for about seven years. It's a long time to be not getting up in your admissions, but down. Since 2011, TCC has lost about 28% of its students. That's huge. That is a quarter. That's like one out of every four of you not being here next week. That's ridiculous. But thanks to some college-wide changes, which apparently took seven years to make, Kurt Azen, there's two A's, sorry. Azen, Azen, Eisen, Vice President, Kurt Vice President for Information Systems and Institutional Effectiveness, is hopeful that students will sign up and keep coming back. While, oh, really? You just put his last name? While this guy expected this spring's registration totals to fall below last year's, he said the report doesn't account for the first wave of students going through a newly added program. We require all students to meet with an advisor before they can register for classes, he said. Good going, Kurt. Duh? Question mark? Before students could sign up online and select courses from the online catalog, all without speaking to anyone. That seems totally safe and well advised. <laughs> advised. Now, students will have to meet with an advisor, either in person or over the phone or online, to ensure they're selecting the right courses and enrolling in programs that align with their career goals. So let me get this straight. For years, this college was getting away with just having an open enrollment and almost no academic advising semester to semester. Yeah. And you wonder why it was declining. I mean, when when I don't know what to do, often I just won't make a move, especially when it comes to paying per credit. And if I don't really know which classes to take and I don't know who to call, because here's here's reading between the letters here. What you find out is students were not encouraged to talk to their advisors before they signed up for classes. If they were, it would have already been a procedure. So in other words, what, what's being admitted here but isn't being stated is that this college had very, very loose procedures and it wanted to save money by not having as much of a need for advisor to student time. So you could probably cut down on the number of advisors total. Now, while I'm sure that they didn't hire a bunch of new advisors, now they have this process that kind of bottlenecks the whole signing up for new classes by making sure that they talk to their advisor and get into the right classes. I think it's the right move, but honestly, what were they thinking before? You had a bunch of kids that were just applying to classes that they thought were going to help them to graduate, and maybe they weren't. Maybe they were wasting money on classes that they didn't really need, and they found out later from registrar, not an advisor, and then they quit. 
because that's ridiculous. And they move those cre credits over to a transfer school where they would just be used for their gen eds and then they could get a different degree at a college that seemingly is more responsible about the curriculum. Ooh, that's a rant. I really need this composition book. I gotta, I gotta get my composition back. Oh, I'm gonna keep hitting those puns, man. I, I just, I love puns. And, uh, and, and I'm not apologetic about it. I enjoy inflicting puns, but you know, you'll get used to it before. Okay. So this person, Kurt said, though, it's more time consuming and couldn't delay a student's registration. You think when you bottleneck it like that, it's all of a sudden the former, the formality hopefully will set them up for success. Advising sessions will continue throughout the student's education. He said. Right. So yeah, it'll slow things down, but it won't have you leak out all these people that are just not sure what to do and, and probably lost. Kurt also said college leaders aren't taking a passive stance toward bringing students on board. Again, what's being admitted here? I'll reread this sentence as it should have been written. Kurt also admitted that le college leaders were taking a passive stance when it came to bringing students on board in the past. They've ramped up their marketing and outreach. When prospective students show interest, staff will contact them within 24 hours to discuss their goals. That's fantastic. And I, and I think it's great to have a, a procedure that captures and keeps people. Like if, when you signed up for the program, you immediately got an email and it reached out and said, here's what we're doing. Can't wait to have you here. You, here's your, your username was your email address. And then you created your password so you can sign right in. And right away, you can see one of these videos right away. You can get in and look at all the materials and cool tools and techniques and things and articles that I posted on the website. Of course, of course, I would do that. And you could email me and I'll email you back. Like, of course, I would do that. So but anyway, that's what these community colleges are trying to do now. If students have more of a connection to why they're doing this and what their goal is, they're more motivated and more likely to continue, he said. Well, this is where Kurt and I can high five from far away in demolition man style. And I hope he has his joy, joy feelings increased because of this. I, this is absolutely the most true statement of this whole article. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to read it. Truth be told, there's always a method to the madness and madness to the method. If students have more of a connection to why they're going to college and what their goal is, they're more motivated and thus more likely to continue. That's true right now, guys. Are you struggling? Are you struggling with a class? Are you struggling with a relationship with a teacher? Are you struggling with getting your homework done? Or is, is your parent trying to like keep you accountable or more accountable than you'd like them to? This is probably why. Because when you find a connection to the why, your, your value and your purpose in life, it gets a lot easier. Like all these, the dominoes just kind of fall in place. They really do. So for instance, like if I really, really believe in saving animals from industrialization in third world countries where they're exploited and their environment and habitats destroyed, I'm really, really passionate about it. What am I going to do? Everything possible to be as successful as I can in that mission. So what does that mean? I have to get into a great school in environmental protection and conservation. What are the requirements for that school? I'm sure I'm going to go look it up. I'm sure I'm going to find out. Then I'm sure I'm going to meet those requirements and then some, because I want to make sure I get in there. And then I'm going to talk to people who I can talk to, to get me connected on the phone or on the internet or in person to the people who are already doing that. I will learn everything I can about how to be this person I want to be. High school grades will be easy. My friend group will be pretty self-explanatory. It'll be easy to work with people because I already know that these people are on my side. I'm doing the things that they're doing. So my network will grow. So I will have more opportunities while I'm in college, in the summer, maybe even be after sophomore year, in the summer after junior year in high school, I could be working for the EPA. I could be working for the WWF, not the World Wrestling Federation, because WWE now, but it was hilarious when it was WWF, because it's also the World Wildlife Fund. And I just loved when there was a panda and it said WWF because then it was like <laughs> the panda was going to be fighting like Macho Man or like Andre the Giant versus Panda. And, you know, just fun times. Anyway, I would do everything I could. Right. And so would you. And so will you when you've connected what first of all, what are your values? Do you have a value system? Because if you don't, how can you value something? You need to know what it is that you find important. You need to know what's important to you first. 
then you connect that with what you're doing. You get that purpose connected and now it really gets a lot easier. I, I would, yes, have hard days. I would have hard, I'm talking about me now. I had hard days in school. I had projects I did not want to do. I had papers I did not want to write. Meanwhile, I was writing my debate cases, which were longer than the papers that I didn't want to write. But that aside, that was more fun. But I did everything I needed to do. I didn't even know my class ranking until I graduated. I was getting like, I think it was a week before graduation when they put your seating order and I was in the top of the class because it didn't matter. That wasn't the need. My ledge was not, oh my gosh, I, I hope that I'm not in the bottom half of the class. I hope I'm in the top 10%. I didn't care what my goal was. It was, I have to do everything I can to make myself marketable to any colleges that would possibly look at me so that I can get into the best one that's the best fit for me, so I can go on and do what I want to do, which was help people. Ta-da! It worked. It worked. That's the cool thing. It worked. My journey's long, and if you ever want to hear it someday, like maybe we'll do a fireside chat like that, but likely not. Uh, I'll give you bits and pieces over the year. How about that? But it was always with my purpose in mind. And while how I've done it has changed, what I'm doing has not. It's evolved. It's grown. But my purpose and passion have made it very, not easy, have made it actually doable. I'll put it that way. So I know you guys are amped up and you are the creme de la creme and I know you're the high achieving kids, but it's still going to be hard to keep yourself in high achieving mode when you get to college. And it'll be still hard to keep yourself in high achievement mode when there's two weeks into January and it's colder than this and it's darker and you're like, Ugh, I don't really feel like doing anything. Having that passion, that purpose, that value is what's going to help drive you to continue. Just like what Kurt said, even though I can't say his last name. All right, let's keep going. Kurt also said college leaders are keeping competition up because competition is tougher than ever nowadays, he said. And we have to be conscious of getting students in the right courses and getting them through in a timely manner. So this is the other thing. Look, the landscape for college is changing. Less people are looking to community colleges as their resource for getting in and getting that degree and, and getting out into the workplace because the workplace is getting more competitive. Now, I am not against going to community colleges. I think there are some fantastic community colleges, some fantastic state schools, but the idea of things getting more competitive impacts you directly because these campuses may have downturns in their admissions rates. That doesn't translate to BU MIT, Harvard, Yale, the top ones, you know, Cornell, hi, Cornell people. Actually, they're probably not watching this unless they're on YouTube. But all of my students that are in the top tier colleges, they started out anywhere in anywhere in America, and some of them not even in America. And so they knew they needed to be more competitive. They worked really hard and they did a lot of things that you're going to have to do too. So look at the landscape. Why was I just pushing on your purpose? Because you need to be motivated because you're going to have to do better. You're going to have to do more work than even kids that just graduated and went to college because the enrollment's not necessarily going up in the top tier colleges. The application number, however, is going way up and up and up and up every single year and not just for the top 13, for the top 300. And I have a whole list of 300 schools where their application rate is insane now. Some schools getting 20,000 more applicants than the year before bananas, right? But look at that as this is your competition. And so you may very well go to a community college and do really well and get those gen eds out of the way, knock those out, go to a state school on a full ride because you had a four zero in your community college, come out debt free, do that grad school in an Ivy League school and tack on a little tiny bit of debt, but get into a great program and then end up with a PhD from Harvard. That might be your path. I've seen it. It's not like I haven't seen that. That's great. But if you are looking for, hey, you know what? I'm a Brandeis person. I know it. I really know I'm a St. Joe's person. Syracuse is my school. I'm Michigan State all the way. I'm a cheesehead. I'm from Miami. Like, I really want to go to Miami. Like, if, if that's you, just realize the landscape is changing and it's getting harder and harder, not easier. So while we here are always talking about, like, great not being good enough, you can almost stamp that on any high-end college now for their application process. Great's not good enough anymore. Exceptional is the norm. <laughs> it's crazy, but it's true. So 
that's the landscape. I'm not going to go through more of what the article talks about because it is more just kind of for your interest. Again, you can go through. It's the Virginia pilot. It's actually a well-written article. This is a better written article than a lot of ones that I've been reading from high-end and high-tier magazines and, and things like that online. So it's an, it's interesting reading, but I, it's not necessary to prove the point. The point is work harder than you're working now to become exceptional so that you can be the norm for the next four years of what colleges are looking for, the ones that at least that you want to get into. And if they're not one of the colleges that you want to get into and the college you want to get into is like this community college, make sure you're the best version of that community college person as possible. Because again, it's not just about the grades. It's about what kind of person do you want to be? That's the mission. And the mission is going to give the purpose. The purpose is going to give the motivation. The motivation is going to make discussions about, did you get your homework done tonight? Irrelevant, because of course you did. You're on your way to do better things in life. And that's the article of the week. So thank you everybody for coming and discussing the article of the week. If you are watching this on YouTube, I'm afraid we are going to have to bring it to a close. I am going to talk about how we and answer some questions. I'm going to talk about how the composition notebook is going to affect your life and how writing down things is going to be a great way to improve your academics. And I'll give at least three different examples, but you're going to have to jump online and go to the description below, click on the link so that you can become a member and then you can see it. You can even still catch it if it's not already Tuesday or Monday, sorry. If it's not Monday, good luck. If it is Monday, be on there next week. I can't wait to see you. Ask me some questions. Email me in the meantime, eric at collegesuccesscoaching.com. I'd be happy to answer it. You too could win the question of the week. And the question of the week winners get something special, but you will have to sign up and become a member to find out what that is. Stay tuned and I can't wait to see you. Sayonara, guys.